Welcome to the Ladies in Conversation, Spiritually Speaking. We are delighted that you have joined us this evening. And my co-host here is Janelle. And we are going to be doing the third show. And the third show is going to be on loving your enemies. We know that show number one was agape love. Show number two was loving each, embracing each other, should I say, with his love, the God love. Mm-hmm. And of course, this week, the third week, is loving your enemies. So with that said, Janelle, you got it. <laughs> loving your enemies. Thank you, Pastor Mary. <laughs> Thank you for the topic, right? <laughs> so um, I told you when I first got it, I, I paused. And I'm like, okay, loving your enemies. So we're going to go to the scripture first, which is Luke chapter six. I'm going to read um, a little bit of it real quick at the 27th verse. And I'm going to read from the um, Amplified Bible. But I say unto you who are listening now to me, in order to heed, make it a practice, love your enemies, treat well, do good to act nobly toward those who detest you and pursue you with hatred. Invoke mm-hmm. blessings upon and pray for the happiness of those who curse you, implore God's blessing, favor upon those who abuse you, who revile, reproach, disparage, and high handedly misuse you. To the one who strikes you on the jaw or cheek, offer the other jaw or cheek also. And from him who takes away your outer garment, do not withhold your undergarment as well. Give away to everyone who begs of you and of him who takes away from you your goods. Do not demand or require them back again. That is um, Luke 6 from the 27th verse to the 20, to the 30th verse. So, you know, those scriptures in and of themselves are just a whole handful. (laughs) That's a whole lot to swallow. But the whole idea of it is to guard your heart from hatred and bitterness. Loving your enemies and doing good to those that use you and pray for them that abuse you is not really about it's never about the other person. It's about guarding your heart. And it's about forgiveness. It's about learning how to forgive that because the opposite of love is hate. So if you're not going to love your enemy, you're going to hate your enemy. And if you're going to hate your enemy, you're going to open your heart up to bitterness and strife and every evil work. And the scripture tells us to guard our heart because out of it flows the issues of life. And if we don't guard it, if if our heart from from being filled with anger and bitterness and hatred, is if our heart is filled with that, then what comes out of our mouth is going to be skewed with anger and bitterness and hatred. We'll be very cut cutting when we speak. We'll be very sarcastic when we speak. We will be very cynical when we speak. There we, there'll be no hope when we speak. Um, so we'll have a very jaded view of people and things because we are function. Well, our hearts are more open to hatred and bitterness and um, strife than it is in love. Now, having said all that, is it easy to love <laughs> your enemy? <laughs> And then who is your enemy, right? We, we, our enemies are the people who offend us, basically. Our enemies are the people who do us wrong or who hurt us, who, who, make, who make us angry. Those are people that we really consider enemies. And is it easy to say, you know what? You just knock me down the stairs and I'm, it's okay. You know, I forgive you. <laughs> you know, it may take... Um, it may take a minute, but if you practice it, and, and and I like to think at the end result of things. So if I remain angry, if I remain full of bitterness, if I remain um, wanting to get revenge, if I remain vengeful, where what state does that put me in? Where does that put my mind? Where does that put my emotions? Where does that put... Um, 
my the blood flowing through my body because you know um, anger and, and unforgiveness can affect you physically. So if I stay in that position, how is that affecting me? And how is God getting glory out of that? He's not. And so mm. the scripture that tells us to love our enemies really is a, is a lifesaver for us. And now it talks about also when we, uh, Pastor Mary, the scripture where we heap, uh, when we do kindness, it's like heaping coals on the head. Fire. Uh, yeah. Right. So because you're being kind to someone who has uh, misused you or mistreated me, because they don't understand it. The, the world's way is you kill my dog, I kill your cat. Mm -hmm. You you know, you steal my tomatoes, I'ma steal your tomatoes and your potatoes. So, you know, there's, there's this- 25, uh, 22 for your- uh, uh, That's keeping can you, what is it? Proverbs 25, Proverbs 25 22. 22. Yeah, it says for you, so you will heap coals of fire on his head and the Lord will reward you. So basically, right. it's, uh, you need to go down to a further one. Uh, but go ahead, I'll find it. Yeah, so even with that scripture, the Lord rewards you for doing things his way. Because the only way you can be kind to someone who has mistreated you is through the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, sometimes it takes us longer to realize that being angry or waiting for revenge or hating someone does us more harm than it, than the person that we're hating. It takes us a little longer sometimes to realize that. But when you get to the place where you understand that you benefit no one, not yourself, it's not a testimony, you're not hurting the other person. When you get to that place, then you can step into let me at least forgive and then let me be kind and then let me bless them and then let me pray for them and it frees you every time you do it i gave i had a testimony of um the lord teaching me um to do something kind to for someone that had i feel offended me now they might not even know that they offended me. And this is a testimony. Something happened and um, I, I was offended at someone. And, and I felt like I had a right <laughs> to be offended. But the, the remedy and the medicine for that was for me to send them a kind word. And when I did it, immediately I was free. Immediately what I was trying to be offended about didn't matter anymore because it's not like um, my staying upset would, they would have one day said, oh, you know what? I offended Janelle. Let me call. They, they, it wouldn't even cross their mind. You know, so mm -hmm. the, the love that I extended, that I walked in the kindness, which was God doing it through me, helping me, helped free me. And it helped give me a testimony and it helped me become a better person. Doing things God's way gives you two results. His result, his testimony, his love and grace being seen, him being seen through you in the earth, and it frees you. It frees you. And you again become a testimony of the power of God. Mm. The um, I, Like I said before, the opposite of love is hate. And hate ravages you your mind, your soul, your body. Love is graceful. Love is peaceful. Love does not demand its own way. Love does not, um, it love always wants the best for the other person. And the, the hard part I think for us in loving our enemies is really in the forgiveness because in forgiveness, sometimes there's a fear because you feel like if, you, if I forgive them, then does that mean what they did was right? No, it, it doesn't mean what they did was right, but it does mean that you're choosing to walk in love and you're choosing to not allow the enemy to have place in you and have access to you through that offense. So, because mm. the enemy, 
if he can find a place in you and he knows that every time you think of this person, you just get out of sorts. So every time you think of what happened, it just takes you down the road of depression. And every time he will use that and he can come whenever he wants to. It's like a fish with a hook, a hook on a fish mouth. He can hook into that offense and drag you wherever he wants to drag you. How do I know? <laughs> because I've been a victim of it. <laughs> and I got mm -hmm. tired of the enemy having access to me anytime he felt like it. And it's like your thoughts run away with you before you know it. You, and before you could catch them, you done, you done already threw someone off the bridge or you done already told someone off. You don't, you know, you just, the whole scenario plays out in your head because the enemy has access. And when you don't open yourself to God's love, when we don't operate in God's love, then that's what happens. And so how do you resist the enemy? You submit to God. And what does God say? Love your enemies, love your enemies. So from that, we are going to, at this moment, take a break and we will be right back. Now, this week, I have a question for Pastor Mary. So we'll be right back with Ladies in Conversation, <laughs> spiritually speaking. Welcome to the Daughters of Esther, Ladies in Conversation, spiritually speaking. We come on every Tuesday at 5 p.m. If you do it God's way, you'll get a God result. Welcome so back we to the are, Ladies Conversation, Spiritually Speaking. I'll turn it back over to Janelle. <laughs> you see me, I'm so like, anxious to give Pastor Mary a question. You know, mm -hmm. she gave me two the last two weeks. So here we go. <laughs> no, it's an easy question. So when was a time that you had to love your enemies? Like you really had to press in. Press to possess. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Well, I can. Did this happen? This wasn't recent, but it was a while back. Mm -hmm. And I heard something someone said about me. It was not very nice, and it wasn't very true either. Mm -hmm. And that's what shocked me. And so anyway, the very person that uh, said all these negative things, one day came knocking on my door and needed mm -hmm. some uh, money for food for her and a daughter. And at the time I was cooking a meal and when she came to the door and asked me that, the first thing, it was kind of early on in my war, and that's where I really got the big breakthrough because at that point hmm. I'm thinking, uh, excuse me, did you say so? And so <laughs> I wanted to get that cleared up. Right, first. right, right, so right, right. Come into the house, you know. <laughs> so I'm like, but the Holy Spirit must have did a Holy Ghost arrest on me. So I didn't say nothing. Mm -hmm. well, oh, I, so I choked back what I wanted to say. I said, oh, <laughs> yeah, come on in. <laughs> so they came in. So I said, you know what? I'm cooking dinner right now. Behold, that was an exception because at that point, you know, I wasn't doing a whole lot of it, but I did it that time. And God must you have know been it was God. Up. That was definitely God, yeah. right? Right. Right. So I said, well, come on in and you know have have you know have dinner with me. You know, come on. So they came in, had dinner. We talked. We laughed. I never mentioned anything about what I heard she said and did you say and why you said. And right. I didn't go into none of that. I just kept, right. kept, you know, conversation, just laughing and talking and, you know, really enjoying the meal. And so mm -hmm. when they were about to leave, they, uh, I, not only did I feed them, but I gave them money. And I said, you know what? Mm -hmm. Don't even worry about paying it back. Just be blessed. And mm -hmm. so they thanked mm -hmm. me all nine yards and they left. And it really broke something in me because it made me feel better. Like I say, mm -hmm. I think you were saying earlier how, you know, we, we, we retain those negative attitudes and thoughts and we really incarcerate ourselves in yes. um, negative 
darkness and, 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 and uh, offense and bitterness and hatred and unforgiveness. But when you choose to love your enemies, even to bless those who curse you, yes, be good to yes. those that hate you, and to pray for those who persecute you or despitefully use you. So those mm -hmm. are not natural things. Those are godly actions. Yes, yes. And they are a choice. We choose they to are do. a and choice. Do those things by faith in the grace God gets us, gives us to do. We yield to the leadership and the grace of God and do it. Then it again it makes us freer, pulls down strongholds, it mm -hmm. builds us up in the character and the nature of God. So, like mm -hmm. I said, I wanted to give that particular uh, example or testimony because, like I said, it, it really brought a lot of strongholds down because. See, if I got hurt or wounded, I'll just leave you alone and keep it moving, and I don't have to bother with you for the rest of my life. Act, act <laughs> like you never existed, right? <laughs> that's right. But that's not the God attitude. That's not the God, God attitude. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I can do the same thing. <laughs> Amen. You want to obey him. Yes, yes. You know, I think that I think um in the scripture, where, when it talks about loving your enemies, Jesus gives us actions to take. Like you can't just yeah. in your mind say, okay, I love my enemies. I forgive them. I forgive them. You have to That's do something true. because That's other true. than that, that thing will have a grip on you. So we have to bless. We have to pray. We have to, yeah. if they ask for one, give them two. We have, you know, so it, it, the mm -hmm. action is what releases us because that's good. You know, just that's excellent. Just think, I just got that just from what you were saying, just while you were talking. Well, that's, yeah. mm -hmm. that's good. Go and that's so true. You're right. Because a lot of people say, well, I, I forgive or uh, I don't, uh, uh, I'm, I'm all right, you know, they, you know, I'm fine, but sometimes it mm -hmm. does require an action, a prayer, or, or a, a blessing them. Uh, I knew mm -hmm. a friend of mine, she, they were persecuting her and persecuting her on the job, and the Lord spoke to her and told her to send, send uh, a dozen roses to this one particular individual who was the starter up of all this negativity. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and they said that roses are, are a symbol of, uh, I forget what it was, but it was look up yellow roses and what it symbolizes. Is it friendship? I think it's friendship. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna look it up right friendship. now. Yeah, look it up because that's what the Lord actually spoke to her. He told her to mm -hmm. send those dozen of yellow roses. Look it up. And so that's an action. And she did yep. it in obedience. And friendship you know, and caring. Worked. Yep. yep. And uh, so, you know. You may, God may put it on your heart or you just realize, you know, maybe that's something you'd like to do for someone and, and God mm -hmm. in his own way will touch that person's heart. So that, mm -hmm. that was an excellent point that you picked up on regarding mm -hmm. action versus, you know, well, I, you know, I forgave, well, God may put you in a position where you're going to have to show whether you're going to bless them yes. or be good to them, or you're going to pray for them, or you're going to uh, love them. Those are action, mm -hmm. you know, words. And yes. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing a little something now that I know someone personally has since some all through the years has always had an issue with me. And I never said anything to this person and I never probably mm -hmm. will. But now God has got me have to listen to them minister. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, he says, Lord, you, you have he says you're going to get free. You're going to get free one way or another. <laughs> yeah. I said, you have a sense of humor here because, <laughs> but they're excellent. I love the ministry mm -hmm. gift. I love mm -hmm. it, but I didn't, I'm still dealing with that person's personal personality and her attitude and how she mm -hmm. sees things, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. I thank God that the word that she ministers is powerful, excellent, and good. So I said, okay, I can handle this a little bit better. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But I know it ain't nobody but God because the enemy, you know, and, and God will bring things up in your life for the time that you can deal with or receive what he's yes. doing. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I always know when God wants to deal with something in me because he starts, it's like all of a sudden everywhere I'm, I'm hearing about this thing or I'm seeing this thing. He starts kicking it up or it's in my mind all the time. And I'm like, okay, so this is what we're dealing with now. Mm -hmm. It's God's desire for us to be free and to have yes. not to have any blockages that would stop him from moving through us to other people because people right. have to see God through us. They have to see the, the scripture that you used last week, that they will know we are his by the love we have one mm -hmm. for another. And that yes. has to be a love that's seen, not thought about. You know, it right. has to be has to be True. something visible. And so there are I believe that we have been in um, a grand season in the past of a lot of teaching. We've gotten a lot of word, a lot of teaching, a lot of teaching. And now we're in a season of everything that we've learned has to be seen. We are yes. going to have to demonstrate the word of God. We're going to have to demonstrate the power of God. We're going to have to be living, walking examples of what we've been saying all of these years, because just reading it out of a book is not going to do it. Just reading it from the Bible is not going to hit it for people who don't know who Jesus is, right. for people who yeah, have exactly. not experienced, because it's a, there are, I believe there are a lot of people who have been churched who have heard the scriptures, but they haven't seen the scriptures. And so that's right. been the um that's been the um the block, that's been the hindrance of them yes. even committing to God or, or confessing Jesus Christ, receiving him, because they've yeah. heard a lot of things, but they haven't seen a lot of things that they don't line up. So I know that was to and the left, they, but that was good. That was good because what they're seeing is, is not Christ-like. That's the problem. If you think about yes. it, that's just not Christ-like. Yes. But people are calling themselves believers and demonstrating, yes. operating in the flesh, the world, and the, the devil's schemes and tactics and strategies to uh, pervert the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. God is calling us, like you said, you know, to really live this thing, walk this walk of faith mm -hmm. and allow the, the life of God to be manifested as we are the doers of the word, not just the hearers, but to do yes. what thus say the Lord. That's the bottom line. Yes. Even if it kills yes. us, good. That's supposed to kill you. You you die and Christ lives. That's I'm right. I no longer have my mind, but the mind of Christ. It's no longer me. What you used to say, Christ dead man walking. Dead man walking. <laughs> dead man walking. <laughs> Even got there. Dead men. Well, that's what they say when they're going, they're taking somebody to uh, be executed or go uh -huh. to the chamber. They say, Dead mm -hmm. man walking. He's he dead. He's he gone. He's going out. That's so out. sad. He, see, from that him. perspective, is. But Pastor Mary, from that perspective, it's so sad. But when you say yeah, it, it is. it's like, <laughs> like my flesh is dying as I'm walking down here. Yeah, you're, 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 you're dying, right? You're dead man yeah. walking. Yeah, because yeah. It's, it's our time to let Christ arise. Let him abound. Yes. Let the spirit manifest. Grow and develop the nature and the character and the power of the living God. And God, mm -hmm. if we can't, but we, he can do it in us, for us, and through us because we surrender, we yield, we allow our spirits to flourish and to grow in him. Amen. Oh, we're getting excited. Here. You want to go ahead and end it <laughs> off, my sister? Well, we thank you for being with us this week, um, talking about loving your enemies. This is the last uh, the last session in this three-part series. The first one, Pastor Mary did, which was the agape love. Second one was um, embracing each other with God's love. And we talked about loving your enemies. So we hope you were blessed. We will see you next time. Thank you for being with us in Ladies in Conversation, Spiritually Speaking. God bless you. Amen. God bless. Amen.